Hola. Buenas. Ajá. Ah. Ok, está bien. Ok, gracias. Good morning internet, it is 7.30 in the morning and welcome back to the channel, welcome here in Mexico City. Today is going to be, I think an interesting day, it's definitely going to be a long ride, which is why I try to leave a little bit early. So I'm now here in Mexico City and the plan for today is to ride right towards the coast here again but I'm gonna ride all the way to the coast but I'm going to go to this place so I'll be riding something like this and then I'll probably go through the mountains somewhere here I think that the total distance for today is another like 400 kilometers so it will probably take me the whole day so let's go Three hundred eighty nine kilometers. Gracias, adios. Oh, see the sun just peeking up above the trees in the back there, trying to kind of sneak out of the city before it gets super busy. And I, again, I have to make sure I pick up some breakfast along the way somewhere. It's starting to uh, become a little bit of a habit, leaving before breakfast. It's very unlike me. So Mexico City is also sitting well above 2,000 meters. I actually never knew that. I mean, I have to admit, I never really realized that there are so many high mountains in Mexico or that it's so high up in places. The, the visions we have about certain countries are often just so far off. And you only realize it when you get there, I guess. And Getting out of the city is also a busy. Well, maybe it's just because what I consider getting out of the city is still going into the city because it's so big. <laughs> See if I can uh, score myself breakfast here. It's nine o'clock. Breakfast time. Ooh. Hola, buenos días. Oh, eso es desayuno. Muy bien. Puedes sentarme acá. Ya, yeah, gracias. I'll keep an eye on Alaska. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what I ordered. I just pointed at a <laughs> at, at this. So yeah, it looked this looks good from the picture. I don't know what it is exactly. Already given me some some uh, bread or well croissant, and I don't, I don't know what this is. Also some sort of sweet bread, I think. And well, I actually ordered hot chocolate because it's freezing. <laughs> this is such a cold morning. I'm still riding at altitude, I think, or a little bit of altitude. But yeah, it's really, it's really chilly. So, is that you know what? Let me order hot chocolate. And uh, I mean, I'm sitting here at a prime location, <laughs> right next to the highway. The highway is literally just here. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I'm not entirely sure what, what I got. I 
got some soup with um, stuff in it um, and then a bag with meat looks like um, <laughs> and then these are tortillas I think yeah these are tortillas and then uh, I got some uh, onion and salsas um, I'm not really sure am I supposed to eat this Okay, I'm gonna give it a go, but I need two hands. Okay, I am so full. <laughs> I think now I don't need lunch anymore. This starts to look more like it. Ah! Cut through the busy town. Here the mountains begin. Look how lush it is here. Amazing, super lush and green. those uh, armed police squads wow that's a massive well I wouldn't even call it a church anymore it's almost like a cathedral you see it in pink there on top it's huge see over there just over there on the top Oh, that must have room for everybody that lives here, and more. I like these Mexican mountain towns. They're cute. Look at these trees. Aha, see, I knew it. At some point, it had to be on pace still. Truck with. What's that gravel? Look at this! <laughs> Incredible! 
I had no idea Mexico had places like this, honestly. Look at this. <laughs> it's like I'm in Asia. Or in Colombia or something. I just had to stop and admire this view. The mountains get taller and then taller and then taller. It's amazing. And then here and there you see a few houses. Wow. This landscape just came totally unexpected. And that's what I like so much about traveling this way that I don't really know what I'm gonna find. And sometimes you're not finding much. <laughs> But then when you come across a place like this unexpectedly, that's just, yeah, I just love that. But yeah, if you know too much up front, the only thing you're going to get are expectations. And when you have expectations, it's likely that you get disappointed. So it's better not to know anything, not to expect anything. And then boom, I'm blown away by this place. Incredible. I'm not sure if I'm going against traffic or not. See? Gracias. Yeah. Okay. For a second I was worried I was going against traffic, but I guess not. It's another small little town. Is it called? Zapotitlan, I think. Hola. Buenas. Ah. Okay, está bien. Okay, gracias. I think he said something like, "Better go around it, so you don't have to uh, ride behind these people." Zapotitlan de Mendez. Hey, yours. Very colorful church. This is called, uh, oh dear, I can't pronounce it. Kua Kau Kauatapaual de Benito. The scenery has uh, completely changed. I have left the mountains. See, I'm uh, only at 386 meters above sea level. Oh, it's getting uh, rougher and rougher up here. <laughs> Where am I going? Gracias. I think. Must 
place to stay now. Um. <laughs> it says uh, go in there. Yeah, I think I'm wrong, but anyway. road anymore but hey Plus can I don't need roads <laughs> Ah buenas Buenas Um estoy buscando habitación Ah claro que sí Sí hay Sí Ah muy bien eh, una o dos personas Sí una una persona Ah perfecto sí Sí, sí tengo I found a place to stay for tonight. I'm just going to uh, put Alaska down there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm finally off to the place I came here for, really. When I arrived yesterday after a really long day, uh, the, they were already closed, or they closed at five, I think. So I thought, okay, I'll just check them out now. It's a little bit cloudy or misty this morning. Zona Arqueológica El Tajín. There we go. already see the pyramids. So Tajin in Toltec language means thunder, but there have been other records in which they link this place to the place of the dead or the place of the invisible spirits. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Look behind me. <laughs> These pyramids look very different from the ones I saw in Guatemala and Belize and all the Mayan sites. Just the whole architecture looks very different. So archaeologists believe that the first people came here around 100 years AD and this site kind of started to developing into a proper city around 600 years AD. And it peaked or ended actually in 1200. So for about 600 years there was a major civilization flourishing here until it collapsed like pretty much all the other Mayan sites so even though it remains a mystery until today who the people were that built this but it is widely accepted that it was probably the ancestors of the Totonac and the Huastec people um, who are the indigenous people that still live in this area today I mean if you've seen my other videos where I explore um, Guatemala and that site in Belize as well you can see it's completely different, different designs and different buildings, right? So at the peak of the civilization here, it is believed that somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 people lived here. And now they're all gone. They're all gone.
this one is called the Pyramid of the Niches. And you can now count six layers, but it used to have a seventh layer on top that's uh, collapsed. So this pyramid behind me has a square base of 36 meters on each side, and it is 18 meters tall. And the most interesting feature of this temple is that it has 365 niches. So that's a clear indication that this temple is related to the calendar. And don't ask me how they know this, but apparently the niches were all painted red on the inside and then blue on the, on the frames on the outside. So basically this temple was just one big time-telling machine. 365 of these niches. Incredible, right? Well, and they say that another indication of the importance of this temple is that even when the site was abandoned, some locals in the area have always kept this temple um, like from overgrowing. So they always kept it clear from, from the jungle. So this was also the first temple that was finally rediscovered again. But somehow this site has always kept hidden for the Spanish. So they never came here. And uh, yeah, apparently the guy who discovered it in 17, I think it was 1765, he was uh, in fact looking for some uh, tobacco fields <laughs> and then he stumbled upon the Temple of the Niches. Sometimes I wish I was an explorer like hundreds of years ago and <laughs> you could still be the first person to rediscover a site like this. Imagine that. I think what fascinates me is that all these temples look completely different. So this one kind of consists of different terraces. And then that one over there has like these little things on top and is completely in a different shape. And then well behind there is the temple of the niches. I mean I'm not an archaeologist but it seems like over here the variety in the different designs of the structures is a lot more than the Mayan sites that I've seen. I'm not allowed to go any further here. See, by the looks they're still over there, they're still doing excavating works. So there's still a lot that's still hidden. 150 buildings have been identified here, but only 20 have been excavated so far. So you can imagine there's a lot more still hidden underneath these mounds. So, so for example, that mound over there, most likely underneath there's another structure. Well, that was really, really impressive. I'm glad I came here. Really awesome sight. So I'm going to end this video now. That was it for today. Uh, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and then I'll see you in the next video.